Now, there are other interpretations of the strategy here. So let's, let's talk about the interpretations. One is, for about a week, two weeks, there's been a, uh, you know, big conflict between Nancy Pelosi and the squad, these four congresswomen. By the way, four congresswomen, three of them born in America that he's referring to. Three of them born in America. So there's been the squabble between Nancy Pelosi and the squad. And for most of that week, Donald Trump actually was embracing Nancy Pelosi and saying, no, no, Nancy Pelosi is not because the squad was claiming she was a racist. She didn't like women of color and so on. And there was this big fight within the Democratic Party. You'd think that that would be a good thing for Republicans. So Donald Trump was supporting Nancy Pelosi. And you could argue one of two things here. That Donald Trump put out these tweets in order to support Nancy Pelosi and put these people in their place, this, these congressmen in their place, out of support for Nancy Pelosi, and thus continue the squabbling within the Democratic Party and within, you know, that's going to rip the Democratic Party, that is ripping the Democratic Party apart. And if that's the case, then he probably misfired, because if that's the case, then the opposite happened. What happened is that everybody rallied around these, against these tweets and rallied against him on the Democratic side. And they've all made peace, right? They've all made peace for the sake of, you know, attacking Donald Trump, being against Donald Trump. Now, an alternative explanation could be that no, he wanted the Democrats to unite because he thinks that this, these four Democrats are ultimately going to destroy the ability of Democrats to win in 2020, both local elections and the national elections. And in that case, you could argue he succeeded. But that's giving Donald Trump a lot of credit. I don't think that's what Donald Trump is after. Think about how Donald Trump functions. And, you know, again, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on this, but think about how much how Donald Trump functions. Donald Trump takes an issue where there is a real issue. There's a real problem. Let's take these four congresswomen. These four congresswomen are nasty. They're really, really, really bad. Ideologically, they have horrible ideas. They are... They, they, they are, in many respects, socialists. They're the most socialist of the Democrats. They're anti-American. They're anti-Israel. They're anti-American military. They're just truly ideologically despicable. They're bad, bad people with bad ideas and morally condemnable. You know, the, the one who came from Somalia, who's here as a refugee to escape... She hates this country, the country that has given her life, that made her life possible for her and her family, and she hates it. I mean, that is truly despicable. Now, I don't say she's despicable because she's Somali. I don't say she's despicable because of where she came from. I don't say she's despicable because of the color of skin or even her religion. She's despicable because of the ideas she holds, because of the statements she makes, because of what she actually argues about. So you can criticize these women. These women are bad. So he takes an issue where there is something truly bad. And then he takes that and he uses it to make a bigger statement. In this case, a racist statement. In this case, a statement about where they come from and their belonging to a particular group, a country. Now, I know, as somebody is commenting on the chat, I know that by criticizing anybody, people can call me a racist. But there's times 
where it's legitimate to call somebody a racist, and this times it's illegitimate to call them a racist. Criticizing somebody for their ideas and for their moral character is not racism. I don't care what color skin you are. Criticizing somebody because of where they were born is. What's at least a form of collectivism, of nationalism, an ugly, 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 primitive form. It's not where they come from that determines the character of their ideas. Indeed, again, three of these were born in America, went to America schools, American schools. But it is their character, their choices, their ideas that make them what they are. But you take that, you take a legit, potentially legitimate criticism, and you spin it into a much broader criticism that plays into your nationalist, xenophobic theme, and you rally the troops, and you get people excited, and you get everybody interested. And people agree with you. Who agrees with you, as Donald Trump says? Some people like his tweets. That's who he's targeting. That's who he's targeting. He also tweeted 12 hours ago, Our country is free, beautiful, and very successful. If you hate our country, if you are not happy here, you can leave. Okay. That's true. Although, you know, now we're taxing people to leave. We're making it more difficult for them to leave. But so what? And if I'm criticizing the country, do I hate it? I know, I've been, I've been told. I've been told that somebody says that his strategy worked. No, it didn't work. He is now labeled himself and being labeled a racist. Uh, and look... Um, he's been labeled a racist the Democratic Party is unified in attacking him they're not unified internally the, 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 the disagreements among them will continue yes it worked in, in rallying his base but what is the purpose of working to reinforce a xenophobic nationalistic racist strategy Hitler was very successful. And I'm not saying Donald Trump's Hitler. He's nowhere near as smart. But, but so what if something works? Communism, so-called, worked for 75 years. That's not the standard by which we evaluate what's good and what's right and what's just. So the fact that it worked, even if it did work, depends on what you consider work, is irrelevant. Irrelevant to evaluating what Donald Trump... We are not pragmatists. I'm an objectivist. I'm not a pragmatist. And I don't think it worked. Not if you believe in making America great again. This is making America... You know, this is making America what? This is making America terrible again. This is making America racist again. This is making America xenophobic again. This isn't making America great again. This is the opposite. So if the real standard is the success of America, then it failed, and it is failing, and it will fail. He says, if you come after the president... The country, the flag, he's going to defend himself. What the squad doesn't like is that Donald Trump is enforcing the very laws. Okay, that's the immigration laws. Yeah, the question is, are you coming after them for the right war or not? Okay, so this is, this is my broader point. What Donald Trump does is he mixes a legitimate issue. These four women have really, really bad ideas with a really bad issue. Racism, and he combines it. And thus, people don't know what to do exactly. They don't know which, 
you know, he uses, this is called in, uh, you know, Ayn Rand called this a package deal. He creates a new package deal. And he uses that. And people don't know, well, we hate these women. But what Donald Trump sounds a little racist, but he's criticizing these women and they should be criticized. But is this the right criticism? Oh, well, let's support Donald Trump because these women are really bad and we should go after them. And by doing that, you embrace the racist ideas that he's articulated because you land up supporting him and his ideology. He does the same thing with immigration. There's a real issue on the southern border right now. No question. But no, nobody is talking about real solutions to the issue on the southern border. Nobody's talking about changing the laws to really make this issue resolve itself. There are real problems with immigration. Real problems. I mean, it's ridiculous that young children are crossing the border alone. It's ridiculous that anybody just can file for asylum as if it's some magic word. But are we rewriting the laws? Are we, you know, are we redoing comprehensive immigration reform? Are we attacking or re really redoing asylum? Are we addressing the core issues? No, instead we're using it as an opportunity to scare people about these people. Now, while I think there's a real problem on the border, I don't think it's a problem of, oh my God, these murderers and rapists are coming into this country. Oh my God, Mexicans are replacing you. No, it's, it's chaos down there. It's ridiculous. This isn't how you run any kind of immigration policy. But we can't even get to that because he's mixing a real problem with illegitimate issues and combining it into this fear-mongering and people see the real issues and they adopt his interpretations of them. They see these four congresswomen and they adopt his interpretation of these congresswomen. They see China. There are real issues with China. Uh, uh, theft of intellectual property, uh, oppression of all kinds of minorities in China, uh, potential organ harvesting of prisoners, all kinds of rights violation, you know, huge surveillance state. There are real problems with China. Trade deficit is not one of them. But let's lump them all together. And then, oh yeah, we need tariffs because they're oppressing Muslims. Or we need tariffs because they steal IP. Or there's no relation between the two things. So he constantly does this, right? He constantly points to a country and uses a people or uses an issue where there's legitimate concern. And then he focuses attention not to the legitimate concern, but to an illegitimate concern. Trade imbalances. Brown people coming and replacing us. Or crime. Crime is not a big issue when it comes to immigration. Or where there's countries that these women came from. Not a legitimate issue. Their ideas are. So, you know, he, he uses this, and that's his genius, if you will. That's his brilliance, is his ability to manipulate people like that. He is a people's person, a manipulator of people. And to that extent, he is a horrible person. He is an immoral person. He's a pragmatist who can only think about does it work, not is it moral, is it right. He is a manipulator who is leading the American people down a very, very, very ugly, dangerous path. Well, the new intellectual then, you would, you would imagine, would be a fairly recent phenomenon. Uh, have there been any of this type in the past that you can remember that you would like to point out? Uh, what type I would hold as the new intellectual? Right. Well, only to name a few historical examples in the most general way. Mm -hmm. Aristotle is the man I would talk as, take as the first intellectual in history, in the best sense of the word. The founding fathers were Americans, America's first intellectuals because they were thinkers who were also men of actions. They were the men who knew that a reason is man's guide to reality, that man can achieve an ideal way of life on earth by means of his reason and that man requires freedom in order to be guided 
by his judgment and his mind, that men should deal with one another by trade, by persuasion, but not by force and compulsion. It's the founding fathers who established uh, in the United States of America the first and only free society in history, and the economic system, which was the corollary of the American political system, was capitalism, the system of total, unregulated, laissez-faire capitalism. This was the basic principle of the American uh, way of life or the American political system. However, in practice, it has never yet been practiced. A total separation of government and economics had not been established from the first. It was implied in principle, but certain loopholes or contradictions were still allowed into the American setup and into the American Constitution, which permitted collectivist influences to undermine the American way of life, and today it is practically collapsing. Today there is nothing left except an undefined tradition. The active intellectual direction of our society at present is anti-American and anti-intellectual. It is going back to the primordial mysticism of dictatorships and rule by force. Therefore, the new intellectuals now should be those men who will stand up for two fundamental values. The value of their own life, of their inalienable rights, of their self-esteem, their independence, and the value of a non-coercive free society in which men do not use force against one another. Thank you.